At the commencement of World War II, Hitler ordered the manufacture of one of the largest guns ever to be created. Its main aim would be to smash through the concrete defences of the French and German border, allowing for an invasion to take place. In this video, we look at the Schwerver Gustav railgun and its use during World War II. Following the end of the First World War, the French created a line of fortifications along its eastern border, from the English Channel down to the border with Switzerland. The main strengths in this defensive line were concentrated along the German border and consisted of huge concrete bunkers, artillery pieces and pillboxes. Even as early as 1935, it was clear that Germany's intentions were an invasion of France at some stage in the future. This was the same year that Friedrich Krupp, an industrial manufacturer, was tasked with determining what type of weapon would be needed to penetrate those defences. In early 1937, Krupp met with Hitler and presented him with designs for an 80 cm railway gun. Hitler was so impressed with these designs that he authorised the creation of three of them. He wanted at least one of them to be operational by March 1940. Construction started immediately, but the sheer scale of the project meant that it missed its deadline. In May 1940, Germany invaded Belgium and France, bypassing the Maginot Line through the Ardennes region, and within six weeks, France surrendered. By this time, the Gustav was ready, but had no obvious targets at that point. Testing had shown the weapon had the ability to successfully penetrate 23 feet or 7 metres of concrete, as well as 3 feet or 1 metre of steel. The Gustav was massive, the barrel was 106 feet or 32 metres long, with the total overall length of the weapon being 155 feet or 47 metres. Attached to the rear of the barrel was a cradle and a breech block. Mounted to the cradle were four hydraulic recoil absorbers. The barrel was able to be elevated from 0 to 65 degrees. The weapon was supported by eight railroad trucks and ran along two railway tracks. The total weight was 2.9 million pounds or 1.3 million kilograms. The gun had no way to traverse, so it required its tracks to be curved up to 15 degrees. The gun would then be manoeuvred back and forth along the curve to allow for horizontal aiming. It would be broken down and transported across Europe on 25 freight cars. Near to where it was going to be fired, a separate set of three tracks was laid for the gun to be reconstructed. This would take 250 men 54 hours to assemble the Gustav. Further to that, it would need weeks of time for the tracks to be laid in the gun's final firing position. It would need four locomotive engines to move it along these tracks. Some 2,000 men would be needed for the gun to function, with the majority of these required to provide air cover. The overall calibration and equipment needed to fire the gun meant that it took anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes to fire a single projectile. This meant that the Gustav was only able to fire about 14 to 16 rounds a day. Two types of shells were fired, those being armour-piercing and high explosives, with a maximum range of 29 miles or 47 kilometres. The gun would be put to use on the Eastern Front in June 1942, with the port city of Sevastopol a target. Over a period of four days, a total of 48 shells were fired before the barrel became worn down. These shells caused huge amounts of damage in the city. A fresh barrel was provided, but Sevastopol would eventually be captured. The Gustav was moved to Leningrad, where it was placed in a firing position, but subsequently removed. The gun would be disassembled and placed into storage, where it would stay until the final days of the war, and allegedly destroyed by the Germans to avoid its capture. A second gun was manufactured during the war, but was never used. 
The monumental amount of men, equipment and time needed to deploy and fire the gun meant that overall, it was a failure. It was simply too big, and as the war progressed, it would have been an easy target for Allied bombers. Let us know in the comments section what you thought of the Gustav. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to expand your knowledge and join the growing Premier History community.